Okay, the lab this week, the property of waves and how frequency and wavelength related, how uh, frequency wavelength related to the period, and also uh, how the amplitude related to wavelength, period, and frequency. So we look at all those relationships. Uh, we are going to use two simulations. Uh, waves are generated by disturbance, as we learned. Uh, in, in the video, any disturbance would create a wave like throwing a rock on a pond in, uh, or um, uh, basically uh, yanking a rope up and down. You are creating disturbance. This disturbance will be carried out from one point to another uh, in the form of waves. So waves is a motion of energy that moves from one point to another th uh, due to disturbance. Uh, now, uh, is it motion of particles or or just motion of energy? Now, the particles do not shift from their position. They vibrate around their position. So when you create a wave, uh, the particles uh, will not end at different place. Like, for example, uh, if there is a wave in the ocean, the ocean will not move from one place to another. The ocean will stay where it is. It's just the particles of the medium carrying out the energy by vibrating around their position. And this vibration will be carried out from one particle to another in the medium. Uh, so this is one of the confusing points. The students usually um, define um, wave as motion of particles or motion of energy and particles. It's not motion of energy and particles. It's just motion of energy. OK, it's just motion of energy while the particles are vibrating. The particles are vibrating around their position. OK, the first link actually in the lab, in uh, this week's lab, talks about that. Yeah, this here, let me increase the frequency a little bit. OK, now uh, this is the first type of waves. This is like when you hold a rope from one end while the rope is connected to the wall on the other end and you start yanking the rope up and down. Okay, you are creating a wave uh, through the, the rope here. And now the particles of the medium in the rope will be moving up and down. You can look at those red particles that represent the particles of the medium. Uh, so they are moving up and down while the wave is moving from the left to the right. So this type of waves is called a transverse wave. This is example of transverse wave, where the particles of the medium uh, move perpendicular, okay, perpendicular to the uh, wave direction or to the velocity of the wave direction, okay. The medium, medium, vibrating, yeah, and it's better to use the term vibration, vibrating. Here it's vibrating perpendicular, uh, don't say motion because it does not really move from one point to another. It's just vibrating around its position. So when the waves stop, uh, the particles here will, uh, will uh, return to their original uh, position or we call it the equilibrium position. Uh, now let me show you the other kind of waves. Now this is the second type of wave. This is like a spring or, or a spiral spring, a slinky. Would, uh, in the case of slinky, uh, the particles of the medium, as you see here, donated by um, those uh, red dots, are vibrating uh, parallel to the direction of the wave. Okay, parallel to the direction of the wave. This type of wave is called longitudinal. So this is the second type of waves. It's the longitudinal wave, where the particles of the medium uh, vibrates parallel to the direction of the wave. Uh, so this is the case here with longitudinal wave. Light is an example of transverse wave, while sound is an example of longitudinal wave. And I showed you this simulation here um, when I talked about the difference between longitudinal and transverse wave. Uh, this simulation will answer uh, the first six questions, those six questions here. Uh, then uh, you have link number two here, which will answer the rest of the questions in the lab. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, play the simulation. And don't forget here always to open a link. You need to, uh, to press on the control uh, button on your uh, keyboard, then click on the link. This will open it. Okay, so it will open this link here. Uh, you click on it. 
And uh, here you can see the waves. Actually, you can create waves. You can uh, move the plier, and you can see it will create a wave. It asks you here to go with uh, no end. So here I'm pressing on no end, and you can see you are creating waves by disturbance. And of course, the further you go, the higher the amplitude of the wave. If we go small, it will create small amplitude wave. If we go up, it will create bigger amplitude wave, and so on. So you can see the amplitude depends on the size of the disturbance. And you can see with distance, uh, the amplitude will go down the further you recede away from the source of the wave, the smaller the amplitude. And then it asks you to go with uh, oscillator here. So this is an oscillator. We can set the damping to none. And we can alter the amplitude. As you see here, you can increase the amplitude using this slider. Also, you can alter the frequency using this slider here. You can go with the low frequency and then increase it to high frequency. You can slow down the wave here, especially when you want to do measurements. Uh, so if you want to measure the wavelength and the amplitude, you need rulers, right? Because wavelength and amplitude are length. So it's measured by a ruler. So if you check the ruler box here, you'll have two rulers one of them to measure the wavelength and the other one here the vertical one is to measure the amplitude and now of course to measure the amplitude and the wavelength it's best to pause the wave so you can pause it at any moment here click pause so the wave will pause here and you can measure the wavelength remember wavelength is the distance between two successive crests or two successive troughs like here or it's basically the shortest distance the wave will repeat itself. So it can be from here, from this point, to this point, either way. Um, now, of course, this ruler is in centimeter. So this is zero, this is one, this is two centimeter. And each subdivision here, since it's divided to sub, uh, five subdivisions, so each subdivision here is 0.2 of a centimeter. So be careful here, guys. This, is, uh, this will be zero, this will be 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, then one centimeter, and so on. Okay, so it's not 0.1, it's 0 0.2. Each subdivision here is 0 0.2 of a centimeter. You can also measure the amplitude. Of course, to measure the amplitude, you'll uh, line up the zero here with the equilibrium position. This orange dotted line is the equilibrium position and you can measure the amplitude. It asks you to vary the frequency. You can vary the frequency here. And you can see here when we, when we decrease the frequency, what will happen to the wavelength? You can see the wavelength is getting longer, while when we increase the frequency, you can see the wavelength is getting shorter. Shorter wavelength associated with high frequency and vice versa. Uh, also, you can measure the period, which is the time to complete one vibration. So if you click the timer here, uh, this will give you a timer. And uh, make sure to measure the period, set it as slow motion, as I did here. Now, the period is the time taken for the vibrator to go up and down, very much like the pendulum. Remember the pendulum? The period was the time taken for uh, the pendulum to go from one end to the other, then back to its original position. So the same thing with this oscillator. Uh, the period will be the time taken to go up and down. So something like, uh, let me here show it to you by annotation, so it's uh, going from here up, then back, okay, then back to its original position, up and down. Okay, so basically it will be the time taken from to go from here up to the maximum shift, then back to its original position, up and down. This is uh, one wavelength. So I'll measure the time to go up and down here. Uh, this will give you the period. So if I'm trying to do it here, I'll press it right now and wait and then stop it when it stops. Like in my case, it came out to be 0.56 seconds. And then you can repeat it again. All right, guys. So uh, this is basically, uh, you'll be doing those measurements of wavelength, of frequency, of amplitude, of period. Uh, and then you'll uh, talk about the relationship between frequency and period, frequency and wavelength, frequency and amplitude, and so on. And that's it.